Welcome everybody, Catholicism here, and today we are all about showing the world the power of the Pope. Now in 1836, people may look at the Papal States as a backwater with no business having the same world affairs, but really what we stand for here is love and unity. As long as you follow me, of course. I mean, look at Italy. It's been divided for over 1300 years at this point. Somebody has to finally bring unity to this land, and it might as well be me. Now, it may result in a lot of violence and death, but you have to trust the plan, and it will all work out in the end. Now, make sure, if you enjoy this video, to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I mean, you already know it's going to be an interesting game when in the first two years of the game, the Pope has a scandal for sleeping with a member of the clergy. We, but we couldn't let him ruin the good name of the Catholic Church, so we made sure he couldn't make such a mistake ever again. Now, the new Pope wanted the Church to play a more active role in running the country, so he set up a dedicated police force. He also figured it was about time for the church to be getting involved in the economy. But we still weren't closer to unifying Italy, and we needed a capable man to lead our armies to victory. And God sent us Giuseppe Garibaldi, a man so talented in warfare that when the Tuscan army was faced with the idea of having to fight him, they surrendered to us instead. With Tuscany integrated, I just needed to expand my economy more so I could face the stronger Italian nations like Two Sicilies and Sardinia Piedmont. And letting Jesus take the wheel in the economy was an obvious step, and of course, everybody needs to do their part to keep the church running, so we needed more taxes. Now, to ready the economy for war, I figured it would be best to open our markets up so we could easily import weapons. Some people weren't happy with that, but with time, people would come around to it. Later on, I figured it was time to make another big move into forming Italy by taking Piedmont. Now, it wasn't going to be easy for me, but I figured with Prussia, Russia, and France on my side, we shouldn't have many problems, right? Well, the French were doing pretty well pushing the Austrian army back, and the Piedmont front seemed to be going pretty well, but unfortunately, the French were doing too well in Venice because after winning a battle, the front split up and the AI was able to take advantage of that and retake everything that was gained. But at least we secured the south by knocking out two Sicilies from the war. The lines consolidated and I thought maybe the AI could just hold the line while I rushed to take over Sardinia. But then another battle happens in Italy that splits the front lines again. So the AI just runs over my country and fully occupies it before I can move back to stop them. Somehow, I still had enough war score to be able to get Piedmont though, so I just took the state and ran. This war taught me how I needed to be less reliant on my allies because they would only let me down. I needed a professional army of good soldiers to fight my battles and with a few good speeches I convinced the people that this was the way to run a military. In 1860 I saw an opportunity for my next move to unite Italy. Since Prussia and Austria were going through the Brothers War I started my play for Venice. Now I still had to fight two Sicilies this time but now I had to deal with the Danes and Brazilians. And the French and Papal armies fought well together, winning most engagements with the enemy. Slowly, our armies were able to liberate much of Austrian-occupied Italy. But we still couldn't get the Austrians to go below zero war support because we didn't control any of Istria. So I just hope I could get some good RNG and somebody will eventually take the final war goal. Good news comes with the French eventually taking a portion of the state, but that is followed up with bad news with Prussia losing the Brothers War flat out. Now, not a big deal, we just got a hold what we took and France just peaced out too. Okay, good thing though, I only needed to hold for three more weeks to get everything I wanted out of the war. Now, after this major war, there were a couple things that I needed to work on to take advantage of these new states, but things just ended up getting a lot worse for the papacy when this whole liberalism thing got really popular in Italy. 
Now, of course, with God on our side, we could never lose to a bunch of liberals, but they were desperately begging us to allow them to vote, when clearly we were doing the right thing for this country since we were recognized as a great power. I tried to get some people who would be able to convince these misguided souls in my nation to follow the right path, but they were clearly not ready for that. I've learned the best way to guide these lost souls is with bread. By giving them their material desires, they lost interest in trying to take this blessed nation from God. We had a duty to spread the gospel, not just in Europe, but abroad as well. So I went to Madagascar since they seemed in need of proper guidance. And it also conveniently had a lot of dye I needed to make more clothes for people. Fortunately, the Madagascans were open-minded enough to accept the Lord into their hearts. Even at home, the people had come to the realization that they didn't need representation in government because God already had a plan for them and we were capable of making God's plan a reality. Just needed a few holy enforcers to remind people that in case they forgot. I knew now that I was capable of making the final step towards uniting Italy. Still, I needed to assemble a team. While Russia was easily convinced, France demanded a treaty port in Italy, and seeing no other choice, I accepted that demand. Now, France clearly only made that demand with the idea that I'd never actually do it, because they immediately left the diplomatic play when I gave them the offer. And just in case this war looked a bit too easy for me, China joined Austria, because according to Paradox, Qing was the world police of the 19th century. Then France just rivals me after this because they find my misery funny. So yeah, me and Russia are against a lot in this war. It was a rush to clean up the smaller Italian states before the Chinese troops arrived in force. Still, we made great progress in pushing all the other armies back, but navally we struggled because ironclads can't even scratch 18th century wooden ships if you build enough of them. Apparently, this war also caused major changes in the Austrian Empire as they were forced to become Austria-Hungary and adopt that disgusting yellow color. Their government was doing as well as their army since I was just blitzing through their country almost unopposed. Of course, they were forced to accept my terms, putting me in control of almost all of Italy. But this just left the question of, who would be the leader of Italy in the hands of the Qing somehow? I just decided to white piece it anyways, and that still counted me as being the leader of Italy. Now I could freely form the nation of Italy, which is called the Kingdom of Heaven when the Pope forms it. Somehow though, after the war, we have a great famine, and I just don't get how this journal entry works to be honest. I look around at my states, and they all look fine standard of living wise. It just seems badly programmed. I mean, the events that give you cheaper decree costs to help people stack, so I just have 25 authority cost decrees for a while. Still, I couldn't let this fake news of a so-called famine slow me down. I needed to expand more to spread the gospel. Tunis seemed like a pretty easy target for me. Too easy, really, so China had to join against me to remind me that I deserve less. I choose to believe that the offender in this national anthem is referring to the Chinese in particular, since they keep choosing to be the offender of my existence. I mean, America puppets Egypt and nobody bats an eye, but God forbid I try to get Libya, clearly I'm a menace to society that needs to be stopped. The world clearly just didn't take me seriously, and I needed to show the international community what I was capable of. I thought of taking Egypt as a puppet from the United States, which was surprisingly led by a woman despite them not even having the right to vote. You'd think she'd be pushing for that, but I guess she's just busy and has other things to do. Fortunately though, when I declared for Egypt, it was just me versus the US. Now, I attempted a naval invasion of Cairo, and the front lines just ended up pretty screwy. I don't even know how I'm supposed to follow along with what's happening here and it just ends up with a bunch of armies being surrounded in Cairo, and that is enough to convince the American AI to surrender Egypt and give them to me. I thought I might as well clean up some of the remaining lands around Italy to better their lives by being under my rule. 
But it seems the US was very salty about the last war since they joined to stop me, for a treaty port in Libya of all things. So the war starts and I'm fighting the American army and I'm just really confused. Because it looks like I'm supposed to be winning, but the American army is just reinforcing in the middle of the battle. You can see me doing it as well, but the Americans are getting way more reinforcements than me, so I end up losing. I'm still slowly pushing the Austrians back, but I have a problem. My general is not taking the war goal, so the Austrians' war support can't drop below zero. And after barely making any progress pushing from Nice, the Americans just leave the war and I think I have this war in the bag now, since I can just focus all my troops against the Austrians. But after six months, my general still won't take the war goal, and keeps trying to human wave the Austrian capital. Of course I'm frustrated with the generals not doing a very simple task, and I'm running out of time before I am just forced to be pieced out. But I see them finally advance to the suburbs of Vienna, and I think it will be okay. But then, after watching my commanders launch a suicide offensive into Bohemia, it's plainly obvious that my commanders have gone rogue, and I have to take matters into my own hands. It's supposed to be forbidden to do this, but I saw no other choice. I possessed the Austrian monarch and made him submit a surrender deal to me. This wasn't how I wanted it to end, but I had no choice. Vicky 3 really does make you feel like a politician sometimes, though. Like a bunch of people are gathering to force me to change the law, and I tell them I'm gonna do it, and after they calm down, I just stop doing it because I don't want to. What I wanted to do was expand into Greece, and unsurprisingly, the world police showed up. I did see an opportunity, though. I could take their treaty port that they had in Crete somehow, and it was supposed to be a simple war. I would quickly secure the treaty port, then I would naval invade Greece and quickly secure the country and get what I wanted. But there was a problem. America was being stubborn and didn't want to give me the port so easily. So I was facing bankruptcy. America may have won this time, but I would get my revenge. Eventually, I saw something I couldn't help but take advantage of. The Albanians were rising up against their oppressors, so of course I had to back them up. And when they were celebrating how they finally got their freedom, I reminded them that there is no true freedom in life, only new management. But the US caught wind of me doing something in the world, so they had to stop me. Still, this was a second chance to get Crete, so the plan was simple. I would quickly naval invade Albania, secure the treaty port, and get what I wanted out of this war. But there was a new problem. I was losing war support faster than they were because they controlled a small, tiny portion of my African colonies that I didn't even incorporate, so I am losing two war support a week because apparently that's all you need to accomplish a humiliate war goal. So once again, I had to white peace. Still. I couldn't finish this campaign without claiming Constantinople for myself, and I was gonna raise taxes so I couldn't go bankrupt during this war. My arch nemesis got involved against me, despite being in a war against the UK at the time, but I guess they just hated me that much. The Americans deployed a lot of men to stop me. Look, there's even 500 brigades in Crete to stop me from taking it again. But they weren't ready for the naval invasion on the Ottoman capital. The American army didn't even try to stop me, and so Constantinople, along with a bunch of other land in Greece, was liberated by His Holiness. And for reasons I don't understand, the Americans just took a state off the Ottomans. Maybe it's because they expected more out of them in the war, and this is their punishment. But anyways, when playing these games to make these videos, I get a lot of time by myself to think about things. There's a new year just around the corner, and of course, you think about making changes. New year, new me, and all that. But of course, some weeks go by, and you find yourself being the same you in a new year. When you're so young, it's so easy to think you have all the time in the world to get things done, and you end up taking a lot of that time for granted. But then things happen that remind you that you should try to value every day. For me, I was on the night of Christmas when I received the tragic news that my friend Nick Ogden, who some of you know 
as Rilber, was taken from this world in a tragic accident. He was a smart man that I could go to for advice. He had a caring heart that would go above and beyond for those in need, and of course, he was a great friend to be around. He was only 32 when he passed. It's, it's hard to think when you're young that any day you can die, but reality has many ways of destroying this illusion of thinking you will always have plenty of time to do things. Nick had a dream that one day he would create his own video game. It was unfortunately set back due to other unfortunate incidents in his life, but he never gave up on wanting to do it. And although he won't see it happen, I am hopeful in time that we will be able to support that project in the future in honor of him. This man still wanted to do something while I was just sitting at home doing nothing, and I came to a realization. Tomorrow is not guaranteed to anyone, so we have to spend today doing what we want. In his spare time, Nick would do charity work for an organization called the Epilepsy Foundation, since he himself suffered from it. And I ask you guys if you have anything to spare after the holidays to show some support and donate to the organization in memory of Nick. He was a great man, taken way too soon from this earth, and I hope his soul rests in peace.